Hello, and welcome to a somewhat random video where I will attempt for the millionth time to show you how to convert Nintendo Entertainment System or NES ROMs, um, as well as Game Boy and Game Boy Color ROMs into SWF Flash files. Uh, so to begin, you're just going to want to open up your browser of choice. Now, before I start, if you're wondering why this would ever be useful, it's for a variety of reasons. Uh, so you can embed it into your website, so you can turn it into an EXE, whatever have you. Uh, I don't plan on doing any of those things. In fact, I am collecting uh, SWF Flash files and Flash games um, for a super secret project that I refuse to tell you about. So with that being said, um, if you go to the description, there should be three different links. Um, you're going to want to open your browser of choice, mine is just Firefox, and paste the first link into the URL bar. And it should bring you to this website, SWF File Player. SWF File Player is a free player, blah 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 blah. Uh, you get the point. Basically, it is just a Flash player. I already have it installed, as you can see here. It works very well, it's completely free, and you're just going to want to download that and install it to your computer which I already have, so moving on to the next link. Um, you're going to want to take the second link and paste it into the URL bar of your web browser, and it should bring you to this website, JPEXS Free Flash Decompiler, and this program is exactly what it advertises. It's completely free. Uh, it is a program that decompiles Flash games and Flash files. There's no ads or anything. Uh, and you're similarly going to want to download and install this to your computer, which similarly I already have, as you can see by its presence on my taskbar. Uh, so install that to your computer, uh, and once you have done that, just open it up. Uh, it should give you this little window, and um, here it is. You should get this screen. Uh, free flash decompiler, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, finally, you're going to want to go to the third link, which is the only one I will actually be demonstrating, which is just a, um, a little .zip file that I've uploaded to Mediafire. Uh, you're going to want to close whatever ad Mediafire opens, um, called nintendoflash.zip. Just download that, um, and it should open up like this to these two files, mineshaft.swf and the bouncingball.swf. Um, now, if we go back to the Flash decompiler, um, while you could drag and drop both of these in at the same time for simplicity's sake, I'm only going to show one at a time, starting with the NES games. Uh, so drop and drag mineshaft.swf into the, the little thingy here. I'm going to turn my uh, audio way, way down there. Um, and it should open up to this. This is just a homebrew NES game that I got off of a homebrew NES game website. Um, I think it was nesworld.com, something like that. It's actually a very fun and addicting game, which is why I chose it to be the one that I included. Um, but uh, you don't really care about that. What you care about is replacing it with your own game. So um, before I show you how to do that, let me just explain to you some of the features here. There are many different versions of this emulator online. Uh, and I tried to find the one with the most uh, different features. Like, for example, you can press escape at any time to reset the emulator. Um, F is select, H is start, and it even has two-player support. Um, so for a game like Micromages, which I've tested and it works on here, uh, that's very useful for co-op play because that game has a very good co-op mode. Um, now to replace the ROM, you're going to want to go to binary data. There should be a folder that says binary data, and double click that, and there should be two uh, different drop downs. One that says define binary data, and, and then in parentheses two block block. And then another one that says the same thing, but with three block block. Um, and this is the one we're going to want to focus on. It should say NES at the top here, make sure it says that, and there should be a button here that says replace. Uh, click that button, and then it'll bring up this menu where you're going to want to navigate to wherever you keep your NES ROMs. I keep them right here. Um, 
Now, a few things that I should warn you about that don't apply to the Game Boy emulator, but that do apply to this one, is that the emulation is a little weird, especially in the sound department. Uh, the sound can be really, really wonky and weird, uh, and the, that's mostly because, uh, for some reason, percussion does not work. Um, so, like, the NES equivalent to drums and stuff, that does not work or run or emulate in this emulator. And on top of that, uh, not a lot of games are compatible. Mostly games with the simple default mapper, uh, so, like, Super Mario Bros. will work. Pretty much all of the black box games will work. Um, you know, like, simple games like Donkey Kong and Pac-Man and stuff, those will work. Um, so let me just quickly skip to a game that I know for a fact will work. Super Mario Bros. Now this is just a recoloring hack that I made of Super Mario Bros. So that's why it looks different. You can test it as long as you click here first. Um, like so. And the controls are very well set up, I think. They're very easy to use, um, unlike the Game Boy one. Um, if there's one thing I'd bring, if there's anything that I'd bring from this emulator over to the Game Boy 1, it's definitely the control setup, because the one on the Game Boy 1 is a little bit weird. Um, and as you can see, Super Mario Bros. works pretty flawlessly. It does sound a little weird, like what I was talking about earlier, but it does work uh, pretty effortlessly in this emulator. Eh. And if we can just finish the level here. And it'll do the thing. And World 1, 2. And after the little cutscene here. World 1, 2 begins. So... Very simple stuff you probably don't care to see anymore, because we've all seen Super Mario Bros. a million times, especially if you're watching this video. Um, now, Super Mario Bros., as you just saw, works. But something like, say, Super Mario Bros. 2 or 3, uh, well, I'll use Super Mario Bros. 3 to demonstrate... Um, U R S Super Mario Bros. Two, three. Okay, here we go. Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, if we go here, it just does a black screen. Now, with games that'll run, it'll cut to gray, and then it'll cut the game. Uh, and that's how you know it's running. But if it just starts as black and never flashes gray, that's how you know that the game will not run, it will not work. So unfortunately, uh, if you made a game in NES Maker or something, and that's why you're watching this, because you want to turn it into a flash game, that will not work. I know firsthand what that's like, because I have a game in NES Maker. Um, another thing is that some games will, in fact, run, but they won't work. You'll, so, if you're doing this to export a bunch of games to Flash, make sure you test it first. Uh, because if I demonstrate with a game that I know does that, like, say, this game. Uh, The Simpsons, Bart vs. The Space Mutants. And I'm just gonna spam, uh, the H button, or the Start button. Um, just skip all this stuff, because nobody cares. See, it is running... Uh, but once you get to this part where you'd actually play the game, you can't see your character, uh, and nothing seems to be working right. Um, and that will happen sometimes with some games, so make sure that you test your games before you just export them. Speaking of exporting them, how do you do that? Uh, well, good question, random person. So glad you asked. Um, make sure you click on the SWF file, um, and hit run up here. Now, if you haven't set it up like I already have yet, it'll ask you uh, to set up something to actually run it in, uh, which, if you do it the way that I did it, will just be this SWF player that I showed you how to install. Um, make sure you don't close this program until you've done what I'm about to show you, because otherwise the file will be deleted. But go to percent app data percent. Um, and it'll load you in roaming, but you're going to want to go back to app data, local, temp, and if you scroll down far enough, you should get a file that looks like this. Um, 
ffdec underscore run underscore uh, and then some long string of numbers. And if we double click that, you can see that that will work. Um, now what you're going to want to do is just drag this to any folder other than temp, really. Uh, rename it to whatever you want, because that's probably not uh, the name you want. Uh, I'll just name it the simp, because I plan on deleting it, because uh, this game doesn't even work. Um, and as you can see, it will work as its own file. Um, and if you do this a whole bunch of times without ever dragging into another folder and it doesn't delete for some reason, it will show a whole bunch of different files that say run like that. Um, so in the event of that happening, uh, just delete them all and then reopen it and do this whole process again. Uh, and with that being said, that's pretty much it for NES games. Um, make sure you hit stop before hitting run again. Um, I'm just going to close this. Yep. Uh, now, if we go back into here and drag the bouncing ball, the SWF, into here, um, and you can see it'll do this little loading. Uh, it does have a loading bar, and unlike a lot of Flash games, that isn't a fake loading bar, so they can show you their ad. That is a real loading bar that is loading a real emulator, and might I say a flawless emulator. I'm quite excited to show you the Game Boy stuff, because uh, the Game Boy stuff is flawless. Uh, the sound works perfectly, definitely, unlike the NES one. Um, and every game is compatible. Every game that I've tried uh, is compatible, except one that glitched out that apparently had rumble built into the cartridge, which could be a very good reason as to why that happened. Uh, now, unlike the NES emulator, this one does not show the controls on the side, so I will explain them to you. Enter is start, spacebar is select, uh, the arrow keys are the D-pad, Q is, uh, Q on your keyboard is A, and W on your keyboard is B. Very weird controls, I know. That's why I was saying I would carry over the NES controls to this one. But if you want to install key sticks and set up a controller or something, by all means, that is an okay experience, I can tell you from trying it. Same deal as NES games here. You're going to want to double-click binary data. This time there's only one, and it even says ROM, so you know exactly what it is. Click the button that says Replace. Uh, navigate in here to wherever you keep your Game Boy games, and uh, choose whichever game of your choice. It can be a Game Boy game, a Game Boy Color game. Game Boy Advance games do not work, but uh, everything before Game Boy Advance is free real estate. So uh, let me just load in one of my favorite Game Boy games. Now I'm not uh, too super in invested in the Game Boy library per se. Um, but I know a few good games, and this is one of them. Uh, so if we just wait for that to load, I will show you some of the flawless emulation that this emulator showcases, uh, which is pretty cool, especially considering that it is running in Flash. Um, enter. Enter. Um, and as you can see, it is running pretty perfectly. Um, so this is Mario Land 2, running in Flash, and you could embed this into your website. Uh, you could turn this into an EXE and play it as a computer program. You can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with this. Um, and basically every game that I've tried has worked. So let's go to Replace here. And I'm going to close my eyes. You can't see that I'm closing my eyes, but I am. And uh, let's do this game. Open. Didn't even look at what it was. Just some random game. Let's see how it works. Just wait for it to load. And now. And as you can see, it runs. And seemingly without issue. It is in some other language, so I don't know what any of this means. Most likely Japanese. Um, but the point is, it works. Uh, you know, it works. And it works well. And there's no issues. Which is important. Uh, now, this, the game that I loaded with it, the Bouncing Ball, is also a homebrew game. I just looked up a homebrew Game Boy game. Uh, and the reason why I'm choosing Game Boy, or the reason why I'm choosing homebrew games for both of them is so that I don't get sued by Nintendo for uploading their their games uh, to some Mediafire file, because I don't want to deal with that. Um, 
So they're just both homebrew games for that reason. Uh, but I really hope that this helps somebody. Uh, I know it definitely would have helped me a while ago because I have been trying to figure out how to do something like this for quite some time. Um, and I'm by no means an expert on this kind of stuff. In fact, I don't know the first thing about coding in Flash or any of that kind of stuff. But if you do, please help out because I want to see this community going again. Uh, I really do want to see the Flash community because the Flash community seemingly has died out quite a bit. Um, ever since HTML5, which is a real shame because Flash, I think, is much better than HTML5. Not in the sense that it's more capable of doing things, but I just think it's much more convenient and easier to use, and I really like Flash, and I wish that more stuff like this could happen for Flash. So if you know anything about Flash, if you know anything about maybe doing something like this, or having a better NES emulator maybe, or emulating other systems like, um... SNES or Sega or anything, uh, anything at all that you could do to contribute to this and help, please do. Make your own video, uh, post it, post a link to it in the comment section of this video, um, and it would be greatly, greatly appreciated because this kind of stuff is, uh, really, really awesome and I wish more people talked about it and participated in it, uh, and made emulators like this in Flash, but, uh, yeah, that's about, that's all that I have to say. Um, if you're having any issues with this, feel free to email me. My email is in the description, and it's, as a matter of fact, right here. Uh, um, so, yeah, feel free to do that. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.